hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jeff Blaisdell, who is, well, today in Flint, Michigan. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, and Jeff is an experienced digital leader, executive advisor, investor, and change agent with over 30 years success at the intersection of finance and technology. Jeff has held key roles at BlackRock, Fisher Francis, and most recently head of technology at Western Asset Management. During his tenure, you've been responsible and accountable for over $1 billion in global, $1 billion, that is. Still a lot of money, uh, even these days. In global IT uh, and deployment, uh, and leading teams of over three hundred people in support of uh, of of uh, hundreds of billions of global uh, AUM. And what we're going to talk about today here's a really interesting one, Jeff. I think, given your experience, is driving digital leaders and driving innovation, like learning how to cultivate digital leadership skills and foster innovation because i guess for you know there obviously digital transformation and digital change is a huge topic right now but the fact is the people who are coming through are going to be the ones who really lead this i mean we're kind of doing our best now as maybe this generation of leadership but we have but we have to harness what's coming through because they're i think they're the ones we really need to set them up for success, because they're going to be the ones who are really going to drive us into the digital age. I mean, we have, in many ways, we have moved from analog thinking to digital thinking, but we have people come through who hopefully start from a digital thought process. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, 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 I mean, honestly, I'm, you know, I'm not sure it's necessarily an advantage to start in analog and, and learn digital or digital mm -hmm. and analog and, and maybe time will tell and, and, and retrospection. Uh, it's funny, I was having a conversation the other day uh, and, and someone asked me the question, kind of, you know, what would you tell your, what would you tell your younger self? Mm -hmm. And, um, and if you could go back, you know, 20 or 30 years. And I, I think uh, a lot of probably what we will talk today are things that, um, you know, that's a, that's a, that's an appropriate question. Um, I, you know, I've been a technologist for my entire life. If someone said, what, you know, what's one word to describe, you, you know, yourself or your career, mm -hmm. it would have to be, it would have to career, it would have to be technologist. And I, and I think that, that of course is a very broad term and covers a lot of ground. Um, but for me, especially, I think, uh, being a, a technologist for technology's sake uh, isn't, you know, isn't of the best service. And mm -hmm. so, if I if I look at my, you know my career and how to be successful, and if I if I look at my younger self or or people coming up now through digital, what I would say is that uh, you know technology is a tool, and, and there are lots of tools out there. Uh, I, I'm fond of many tools. I, I do a lot of home renovation projects, and of course, there's no end to the number of tools mm -hmm. you can you can apply, and you spend all day at at Lowe's or Home Depot, actually spend three times a day because you know you always forget stuff and have sure. to keep going back and get new stuff. Um, and you know you're there to solve a problem. Generally, you're not there to buy a tool. You're you know mm -hmm. you're there to solve a problem. And, and and I think that I like to look at, at technology that way. And so while I'm a technologist, I, I spent my career in in financial services and. Uh, I, I wasn't there to play with the latest and coolest technology. Sometimes that that certainly that did happen and, and yeah. financial services is a great place to to be. They have challenging problems and generally they make enough money to be able to afford to, you know, to to buy technology. But the key is, and and, and I think this is for leaders of, of, of any stripe, digital or otherwise, younger, older. Um, is is you know keep keep it keep your eye on the prize. What are what, you know, what are we really trying to do? We're we're trying to in my case we were trying to solve uh, business problems specifically really related to financial services and there are many many different types and uh, and and technology really is is ideally is the the application of these set of tools to to solve these problems. So at the end of the day we're trying to deliver the business value and we might be using technology. We're certainly using other tools and so. To talk about uh, you know a cool technology tool or, or, mm -hmm. or even an, even an innovation, whatever it might be, it's like what you know what is what is the outcome yeah. and what is what is the advantage for people? And so, if I look at the people that I would say in my career have been the most successful within technology, and I've worked with thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of technologists in thirty plus years, I would say that the ones that are most successful are the ones that can 
cake <clears throat> or be uh, what I would call uh, hybrids. So right. they certainly they understand the technology. Um, but believe me, there are many, many people out there that understand the technology. And there's always someone who will understand the technology more than you, right? Like that's mm -hmm. just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. um, so be, go ahead. Yeah, you no, know, one of the things I was going to ask you. So, I mean, digital transformation, obviously, it, it's it's a big buzzword and you know it's been it started you know some people were on it a while back it's kind of been accelerated now but to your point is if you just jump into digital for digital sake or just start trying to automate or use technology without looking at your current processes today what are you trying to achieve what is the impact on on the end user the customer what is the impact on your business there's a lot of there's there's some work to be done before you dive into it. and i feel sometimes people are starting to dive into digital trans trans ugh, digital transformation without really doing the groundwork uh, well there, there's certainly uh, what you what you would achieve and if you're in a position of supporting people who are going to be the beneficiaries of digital uh, you'll you'll end up frustrating people you, if you don't bring them along on the journey. And uh, and and one part of bringing people along on the journey is just having having the foundation in place in the first in the first place. So if, if you look at you know, bigger companies that have defined IT budgets or something like that, mm -hmm. generally speaking, sixty or seventy percent of the spend every year is going towards what we call like keeping the lights on. So yeah. we've created all this stuff. There's, there are costs required to keep it running. Um, after that, whatever's left over, call it 30% or 35%, uh, generally goes towards, like say, incremental improvements, new features, stuff like that. And, and way at the end is, if you're lucky, a few percent on innovation. And mm -hmm. that's if you're lucky. Many, you know, many firms aren't pursuing that innovation on their own. They might say they are. And so to be successful in an environment like that, you certainly have to con convince your constituents that you're doing a good job maintaining what's already there, that you're making some incremental improvements, and that you've, in, in effect, earned the ability to take some effort and time and money and spend it on innovation and and, and hopefully do it, you know, do it, do it in a responsible way. So, run the you know, yelling innovation or digital in a crowded theater is probably gonna, you know not not going to get you a lot of advocates if if you're struggling delivering air and water and shelter and mm -hmm. um and, and that that's certainly been my experience um in corporate i and i and i think we're you know we're throwing this word around digital like yeah. we you know like we even understand mm -hmm. uh and they're sharing a common definition and um you know i you know i i i think we all generally sort of understand um what it is but uh but but making sure that business, the people that you're working with, that you're trying to pitch this digital innovation to, um, have a have a you know a shared sense of a the definition, uh, yeah. you know, b the journey you're taking them on, and and you know ideally what the outcomes are. So. Yeah. So I mean, and I think it's a good point. Actually, I I should have actually asked you your definition at the beginning because I normally do when the uh, when the subject comes up. Um, so I will ask you your definition in a moment. But also, I think thrown into the mix now, obviously, is you know, we've had this explosion in AI and now people, I, I feel that pe some people are now getting a little bit, a little bit nervous about digital because they think AI, digital transformation, this is all taking away everything, going to take away everything, replace me, you know, rather than how I see it is hopefully it'll be a supportive thing and allow you to focus on more high value activities. But maybe first, like, just give me your definition of, of digital transformation and then let's talk about the, the AI component. Oh, I was hoping you weren't actually going to ask me what my definition of digital is. <laughs> it kind of depends on the moment. And it's probably yeah. going to be a little bit off the cuff. Um, I, I, you know, I am personally, honestly, I'm surprised that it even, you know, it came to that point. I think the the term digital is, it, it, it could have it could have been applied anywhere in the history mm -hmm. of, of, yeah. of technology. And it just happened to be something convenient. And maybe it, gener it, it was generated with, I don't know, consultants or salespeople or probably. something like that. I think it's generally accepted uh to you know to be the 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 some level of technology beyond relatively straightforward simple technology yeah. that um that maybe accelerates the delivery of value more quickly than it has mm -hmm. in the past and and that of course is has, there are a lot of qualifiers in that definition and then, like i said i just kind of made it up um but to me that's you know that's yeah. what it is if if we were on some curve and, and you know like they say technology the discovery of 
of uh, learning new things. Uh, what what we what we are learning as humankind is on some sort of exponential path, right? You could you could say that well, we've hit some certain point, and we can argue what it is where. <laughs> You can't like it's it's difficult for us to function and and improve as a society without without the application of technology and innovation and and so somewhere on that curve we can say oh now we're you know now you know now we're doing digital. Mm-hmm. Um, I played on a Commodore sixty four back in you know nineteen eighty five or whatever mm-hmm. that was. <laughs> you know it was kind of digital. Um, yeah. So I, I was gonna I was gonna say I remember. Uh, I don't remember, but I seeing the first digital watch and thinking wow. Yeah. <laughs> you just think. <laughs> Right. <laughs> How far back that is. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, as I said, I think um, I think part of it is people don't is is that now because of AI and other things coming in, the people have suddenly started to become a little bit maybe concerned about uh, digital transformation because they think it's going to just remove themselves. Um, but let's face it. I mean, we have so many disparate systems and, and needs within an organization that connecting them and making those processes uh uh, you know, work smoothly together and people being able to get the data out where they need it at points. Those are all good things, I would say. Yeah. 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 And I mean, we could talk all day about, about AI, no doubt. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I'll be the first one to admit, I'm not you know, up to my armpits in AI mm-hmm. on a, on a daily basis. And I, I, I think that um, the, 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 let's say the popular hope, and I think there are a reasonable number of pe- people uh, that, that that follow this more than me, is that AI will certainly it will eliminate some jobs. There's there, mm-hmm. there's no doubt, sure. and, and we could argue it probably should, but that um, that in most cases, ideally, it will help us, uh, it will be, you know, augmentative to, yeah. to our jobs. And in financial services, we've been talking about this for, you know, for years, uh, is, a, is an AI ever going to be able to outperform um, an, an, a, a qualified and, and competent investment manager? Um, you know, maybe, but, but maybe not for a long time, but a competent investment manager armed with a decent AI right. Clearly, will outperform just a competent and, and 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 much like what happened in the chess world, right? Like a a grandmaster plus an AI mm-hmm. is a better combination. Um, I'm assuming still than yeah. just um, than just the AI, uh, mm-hmm. and and certainly that's you know that that's kind of what we all hope. I from 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 my perspective, I think some of the the moral implications of where AI is taking us are, yeah. are you know potentially more fraught and uh, and and there's more disagreement probably in that area of AI than there than there is in the whose jobs are going to be eliminated mm-hmm. and whose are going to be augmented, et cetera. Yeah. And then the whole part of like, uh, you know, still maintaining a customer centricity and a customer centric design. And really, because I think this was happening, I believe, before the pandemic, people were starting to want more kind of human interaction and engagement. Certainly the pandemic, I think, accelerated that. But I think today people want people want that kind of human element, that human touch. They want to feel like there's humans back there. So I think as you are you, as you're using your digital tools, as you're doing your digital transformation or whatever, like you have to, you have to put yourself on the other side and look at the impact. Because, because we all know we've all had plenty of frustrating experiences about trying to engage with uh, a company and never getting near a human being. Um, and so, I think that that whole customer centricity is critical. I think that's yeah, that's a great point. And um, I will. So, I am working with a, a startup right now, mm-hmm. and. Um, and, and, and a relatively significant component of it is 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 based on AI, and uh, it's to improve sales outcomes. And, mm-hmm. and so this is a tool uh, to help assist uh, sales uh, salespeople and sales management um, to achieve better better sales outcomes from their meetings. And sales and the feedback from sales is 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 one is like a very highly subjective area, certainly in a lot of industries. So you know, salespeople who are doing in person or even virtual meetings like this, um, after the fact, asked how the meeting went. It's all very subjective. And mm-hmm. what you know, what if we can use AI to help uh, improve those sales outcomes by gathering data during the meeting, um, and some of it passively and some of it actively. And uh, then you, you know, at the end, use use AI after the fact to um, to take some of that subjectivity out of the experience. And so, one, as I said, one of the companies I'm working with now is um, is is pursuing that. And 
Um, and I think that's a, you know, an, an example. I personally think that's an example of, yeah. of you know, of, of AI that's going to benefit you know, the potential, the prospects, customers, and you know, and the salespeople. But no, I I, I, I 100% agree on that because, uh, like you said, uh, I used to call it happy years. You know, yeah, when you, uh, when you're, <laughs> you're, I haven't heard that. Did you trademark that? I like. No, I didn't trademark it. <laughs> it's uh, but I was at happy years because you hear what you want to hear, you know, yeah. sometimes, and you come, and you're right. You know, people could come away from a meeting, and if you've ever you've listened in on a sales call once or twice, I'm sure, uh, yeah, yes. and, and then the salesperson writes it up, and you're like. Okay, I didn't get any of that out of that. Right, <laughs> right. And this, our, our customer relationship management systems are filled with that subjective, in many cases, mm -hmm. nonsense, right? So, yeah, no, 100%. Um, so, where do you see, uh, where do you see technology? What's, what's the next frontier of technology or mom in your mind, given, you know, your, your, the experience and how long you've been in the business? What's the next step? I don't mean the next leap, maybe the next step. I don't know. I mean, I could be a get off my lawn type of old guy or something like that and say the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 it and it and it's true. I mean, there are certainly some huge innovations within within technology, but a lot of it is just it, it's kind of incremental improvement. I mean, like I look at it, something as simple as a lawnmower, right? We used to push them around, and they had the spinning blades, and then they, somebody threw a gas engine on it, and then when there were electric ones, and now there are people having robotic lawnmowers, and they'll throw AI on it. And at the end of the day, we're still cutting our lawn. Yeah. Um, you know, I read a book oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago called More Work for Mother. And this was back in college. And I, the book was written probably in the 80s or 90s. And and it, it was basically for like for all the innovations, just looking at the home in, you know, in 100 years up through the 50s, uh, people were doing more work. Like they were spending more time, um, you know, even with all these tools. So I would say that a lot of technology improvement tends to be incremental and tends to be kind of doing the same things, maybe faster, maybe giving us more time. But um, but then there's this sort of truly incremental stuff. I, I, I mean, for me to sort of prognosticate about what's next, I mean, that could, you know, turn me into the next, I don't know, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or something <laughs> like that. I, you know, and I wish, and if I knew, I might not even say it on your podcast um, <laughs> because where would be my advantage? Um, I, I'm, I am fascinated about AI though, and it, with AI. And as I mentioned, I think, um, why, you know, while I'm not, an, you know, I, I can't tell sure. you all the things I can do with chat GPT, I'm interested to see where, some of the the more like the more uh, moral uh, uh, plays, um, ethics uh, in AI. Like, I'll just give you an example. Like, um, what if we replaced some amount of the judges in this country with AI? Right? We could have the AI go out and read um, all you know the case uh, case law. Uh, you know, create you know create a whole bunch of jurisprudence, and in theory potentially eliminate a lot of bias from the system. There are many, I lived in Los Angeles County for 20 years. Um, the court system in there is is backed up pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things that end up being tried, you could argue, hey, wait a minute. Um, but as soon as you start running that by people, the idea that something that's not human is going mm -hmm. to be determining an, an outcome, people start to get really nervous. It's uh, they'd, they'd almost rather have the human bias in the system. Right. Um, right. So those types of, you know, that, the, you know, the, the, the next, you know, the iPhone 20 and what it's going to do, I, you know, I don't, I don't really yeah. think as much about those types, types of things as I think about maybe how, um, how we can improve, you know, bigger, like, okay, so autonomous driving, that's another thing. And I don't know very much about autonomous driving, but I know, um, once again, from living 20 years in LA and 10 yeah. years in Manhattan, that when we figure that out, I mean, think that will have a monumental impact on the way we live our life. Monumental. I mean, mm. think about all of the the time that can be you know recaptured from that, and and that's probably AI in general. So if we think about what you know what AI can do, a lot of it um, maybe it will be replacing jobs, but at the end of the day, it's going to be essentially creating another half of a lifetime for all of us. I right. mean, if with all you know with all the extra time so yeah and i know i agree with you on the on the ethical stuff i mean it's like even even uh things like bots and things uh you know when you communicate with the company i mean if it's not a human if it's a bot i mean i believe you should tell people that you should be upfront and honest about it rather than somebody you see them trying to fool you that it's the, uh, that it's a bot and i just think that the more you're the more you're upfront and open with people because yeah if if, for instance, the bot works better than the human, people will use it. But if you try and fool them, then, you know, they're going to be suspicious of what you're doing. 
Yeah, and, and it'll be interesting. I mean, that's a whole a whole nother. I mean, the, with the, the legislation and the regulation and and all of that that's coming too. And you know that you know the the whole bot thing reminds me of that movie. I don't know if you saw her. I think it's maybe ten years old now. And it's basically the the protagonist essentially falls in love with what is a chat bot. Oh, right. um, it, it's set in the future, some sort of mm -hmm. dystopian future, but. At watching that movie, I remember thinking at the time, come, this is like preposterous. A guy's <laughs> falling in love with a, and now here we are 10 yep. years later, and it's not quite so preposterous. And 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 now it's, it's more the ethical questions yeah. than than the practical questions. Yeah. yeah. No, I read the other day about these people having, you know, falling in love with AI girlfriends and stuff. And you're just, I mean, I can't even wrap my head around. I didn't even know how <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe we won't live long enough to appreciate Yeah, that. hopefully. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be well out by. Then, right, to be we're going to need disclaimers for sure, though. So, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, uh, Jeff, this has been great. All of Jeff's information will be below this video. But before we go, Jeff, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, sure. As I mentioned, I worked in corporate uh, technology for years and years. Several years ago, at the beginning of the pandemic, I left that. Um, I've been investing in startups, and through the through that process, started advising startups, and through that process, became a uh, part time CTO for a couple. And I've now formed a a company called Beyond Formation, uh, and our goal is to kind of take some of the mystery out of how to get startup up and running, um, how to structure, uh, how you think about getting the things done in a startup. Uh, and I encourage everybody to visit my website, beyondformation.com. Yeah, absolutely. I'd encourage you to do that because um, I think you know, the, the ability to start up uh, all the technology and everything and all the advantages you have today, I mean, it's it's fantastic if you know how to use them. So I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us today. Thank you very uh, much. See you all again soon. Thank you.